This is DJ745 for World of Reggae here in Jamaica, going to be sharing some reggae history with a reggae elder. He may not actually class himself as a legend, but we certainly see him in that light. His soulful voice has warmed to the hearts of people over the world for more than 50 years. Ken Booth, welcome. Thank you very much. And I must say that welcome to my home. Well, what's your name again? Danny. Danny? Danny, but you will come to my home and again. Right. Right? And um, thank you very much for coming. Yeah, thank you. Uh, the pleasure is ours because you were so welcoming when we've been here previously. Um, we almost felt like we wanted to come back again and share some of the, the history, the stories. Um, sometimes maybe breaking some myths along the way that, you know, some information that may have been misconstrued over the years as well. Yeah, and some information in no way too. But, but here I am, upfront and personal. I, I was born 1948, the 25th. I have to say the 25th. I end up with three birthday because the, the birth paper place, it was the 22nd. I know it's the 25th because whatever they gave you, you know, at the, birth, at the birth office, that's what you have to work, with. work with. But my sister's been tell, to telling me that I was born on the 19th of March, meaning that I have the Pisces. But I have to work with Aries yes. now. So, okay. but as long as the year is there, the 48, I'm okay. okay. But I, I grew up in a, in a family that is very musical. My mother, she, she had um, seven girls and two boys. And the first girl she took up entertainment, her name is Iacin Clover. And I'm the last one. And both of us choose the same career. I remember that when I was young, she was the one who took me on stage for the first time. And um, she, she so, she's a great woman. She, not because she's my sister, I'm saying that. But she, can, she used to make my clothes. She saw my, my, my costume. Because I've been going on stage when I was about like seven years old. My mother used to take me first to the YMCA when they have competition. Mm-hmm. And most of the time I won, you know. But when I, the songs that I sing, some of, I don't know some of the words, so I make up my own words. And from, from there to my sister, you know, who, who was in, in the show business big time in Jamaica those days. So she's a haul around her. She, she saw my costume. She trimmed my hair, you know, and, and then she took me with her at rehearsal. But I started out as a dancer first with me and my younger sister, <laughs> you know. That's why, I, that's why you see what I'm like on stage when I'm performing. I have to dance. And um, then gradually, um, she, 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 used to, she used me in, in pantomime, like, like, like for kids, anything for kids, you know. She would let me play that part. After I dance, I'd play a part in, in, in some kind of act that they have, you know. And, um, and then um, Boy Stone is an institution that that had everything before more school because of, of grants. They grant them. I was younger boys go to that school, but in the evening, even girls end up there because the facilities that they have, they have ping pong ball, they have tennis, soccer, cricket. I didn't involve in none of these, 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 these games, but I, but I love to watch them. <laughs> was, this, was this based in Denham Town as well? In Trenchtown. But, but I was born in Denham Town, grew up in Denham Town. Now, the person that discovered me is Stranger Cole. I used to pass by his house every day. I have talked about this. In every interview, I have to, you have to talk about this. I used to pass by his house, and I, I hear singing, you know, but, but, but I love singing from, you know, let, let me go back again from the beginning, because while going to private school, like they call kindergarten you now, Every evening when I came home from school, in those days my mother lived in, she, she lives in tenement yard, consists of many different families. And so these families have their children too. So my, my mommy told me that every evening I came home, I used to gather up all the children and get these milk cans. You can't talk about this because, you know, drum is the first music that we identify with, you know. Anybody will tell you that. You can listen to a jump from far, far away, you know. So 
I get up all the children in the house, in the, in the yard, and I would, ma I, I would take this can and I'd board the little holes and little a nail, and put the cards into them like, and like a, 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 like a neck drama, you know? Okay. And I'd put them around their necks and mines, and I'd march them around the house. And I'd be making the jump sound with my mouth, because it's not a real jump. But we have some little piece of sticks and we would do, but my mouth, do 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 and my mother used to call me Balam because I could say Balam, 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 Balam. And that's where I got my first musical name, Balam. And so um, we changed now to, 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 to elementary school that they call secondary now. And because Boys Town, as I said before, have so, so much facilities for kids, you know, for young people. Every, every, every school actually in the corporate area used to go there every evening, as far as I remember. And on my way home, I would pass by a stranger's house, and I'd be hearing music, you know, singing. And it, it, I'm so, I'm, I, I love singing so much when I was a young person, you know, that I would stop by and they don't know, and I'd be listening. And this is what music, you know, every time I, I, I go on this subject, what music? Music is a, like a drawing card, you know, it, because it, it can draw your, your attention so much, and then and then physically also, because I find my way in the midst of it, and don't even I can't tell you how, but I know I find my way in the midst of of, of these guys singing, and I was I, I did, I'm there and I stood up and I, I listened. And me and Srinya start to become friends, you know, in, 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 in the sense that every evening I pass there, I stop by. And I, I don't quite remember what I know, that they were, were singing a song and I fill in a little harmony. And Srinya said, but you can sing, you know. And I tell you, let me tell you, from that day, me and Srinya was like Peter and Paul. You know, we don't leave each other. You know, every day I, we, we, I, when I get to know him good, we, I, I st we start to r r write songs together, we wrote songs. And, um, but he was already a big star. Yeah, he was singing with Patsy, you know, and he was singing with his group and, and, a, and a solo. And so, um, both of us, we wrote two songs. We wrote, I'm all saying you are. You know, because in, in our area, it consists of a lot of Chinese people. They have the bakeries, the bars. So one day we decided that we want to, we want to do a song with a Chinese sound. And this is what we got. I'm all saying, that's what she says to me. You know, I love song, but we don't know what more saying means. Okay. Means, at least. <laughs> and, um, and then we wrote, Una Dos, too. Counting from one in Spanish to six. Una Dos. Tres, cuatro, cinco, seis. And he decided no to. He took me to Jukrid one day for an for an edition. And I was fat, you know. You know, when you're growing up, you eat a lot. And I used to eat a lot when I was young, when I was a baby child. And, and Jukrid looked at him and said, You're going to look a fat boy, he can't sing, no? And Shrina looked at him and said, Yes, he can sing. And he said, all right, sing. And both of us started to sing Una Dos. And producers in those days, they, they, he felt it right away that I can sing. And he said to the stranger, we them not finish singing the song. He said, Struda. And you know, up to today, I'm still going where that building is. I have some friends down there by Drew Creed. And when I went up there with Stranger Cole, he had already used to, to, to sing with a band. I don't know nothing, nothing about that. And um, when, when our time comes around, you know, in those days, you have a red light, you know, that turned on whenever it's recording time. But you run down the song a couple of times because we don't have much track to work with. So everybody have to record at the same time. And I prayed, you know, yeah, I tell you the truth, I pray, because I love singing and I want, I want to, to do it, you know? And when our time comes around, and we run down the song with the band, people like Baba Brooks, John Diego, Bego, 
uh, and, and some other people that I can't recall right now as musicians, you know. Um, and then when you see that red light comes up, you know, I said, Lord, put me through this, carry me through this. And when it's time, you know, and, and I find that because I, my mother, you see, she's a singer. And as you know, America is the first place that, that, that have inspired us, you know, musically speaking, because they had everything before us. The blues. And so um, I go right through one cut, one cut, and, and that was that. And I, I, got, I got 10 pounds from my part of the song. I got 20 pounds. Stranger got his 10, I got my 10. But I have to wait a long time for my 10. Because okay. Drew Creed, I was, I was young, you know, so I kind of have a fear for him, like, because he had these, these guns and things, you know, a big shotgun. And one on his desk. <laughs> one of the stories that we've always heard is that with with the setup back then, it was mainly two track. And, you, you know, as you detailed that you had to try and sing one take because otherwise the studio was losing money. The musicians, the musicians had to, yeah, money. money. And one of the main men for that, to protest about that was Brivet, right. the bass man. He would say, hey, Juby, we are doing it. You are going at this sound. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> One of the other stories that we hear is that Duke Reed, being an ex-policeman, could sometimes be quite intimidating. Did you ever fear that yourself? In, in, the, in, in, a, in a, not, a, not, a, not a physical sense, but in a spiritual way. Okay. Because he, he, he would know that I'm there waiting for my money. And I have to wait. Sometimes I, I, to let him know that I'm still there, I peep out like this. And look, look that him can see me. And I still have to wait another, for another while. And... Mm. Till he called me inside and he gave me the money. Mm. And I came home with the money and I gave my mother most of it because we were on parent care, you know. And then now, he, he, he used to have some independent producers also. Sir Percy. He had one name, um, a Syrian guy. Oh. He's a Syrian. He had a sound system. A lot of times I can't recall his name. Um, Sir Mike. Was his name? He's a lovely man. They, they had some stores downtown. Now these people used to pay us more money than we we, we got before. Okay. But but it it wasn't the money so much like want to do the work, want to record, you know. And so I record me and Stranger record for 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 this guy, record for Sir Percy, record for some other other people that just want to to record us because we can sing, but they're not. People who established, they just have the cash and, and they recorded us and they paid us. So you have a guy, you call him Big Sevens, you know? Big Seven, he used to, he's a man who deal with herb, you know? You know, cannabis. And he, he loves us because we used to sing for him. You know, we pass passing through the Boy Stone. When we were coming from Boy Stone, I would go over there to have a little reef or so. And he would see his house and he would say, sing two songs and we sing for him. And, he just wanted to record us, you know, and so he recorded us, and that was one of them too, and and, and many, many more that I, I can't recall, you know. But that's how the journey started, and and um, now Sir Cox, you know, we're like I don't like to say Motown. He is Motown. I don't want that Motown have Motown name, but Sir Cox is Motown for Jamaican music. Right. And um, me and Stranger, even Stranger is a star, a big star, you know, with Rough and Tough. When I call your name, these big songs, even Stranger want to break that barrier because Stranger, Sir Coxon, he had all the great singers, you know, solo singers, you know, uh, Wilfred Edwards sing for him, you know, um, Owen Gray, you know, um, uh, uh, um, 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 uh, what is his name again? Um, I don't recall his name now. Um, but anyhow, we have so many singers and and you have like Keith and Heenid, you know, and, and these singers are like American singers. Mm -hmm. So Cox and music were like America, you know, because it's so refined, you know, and, and and the musicians that played for him. 
they are, they are, they are genius, you know? So, Men's Trinity decided, decided that we're going to go there for an audition. I'm lucky, to be frank with you, to, to, to really get into this business, I'm lucky. Because it's as if Sir Cox was, was so glad that Stranger came there. Because we have a big name. And so we didn't go too much. We, just, we wrote World's Fair. Took my girl to the world's fair and let her choose all she needs there. Now you choose. In those days, 1962, the world's fair in New York mm -hmm. with a show of cars, all different kind of invention. And, and then we wrote Artemella. Artemella, my pretty little darling, please come home to me. I just did it back for you know, the yard, you know. The, the, the project, yeah. yeah. Let me just stop you there for a moment. Now, back in the very early 60s and even throughout the 60s, there was a lot of rivalry between Duke Reed and Sir Cox and Dodd. So, Prince Buster, and Prince Buster as well, the big three. Yeah, now, for you as a young teenager, was it seen as though you were crossing over a boundary, moving from Treasure Isle to Coxon? Yes, from boundaries to boundaries. Because, okay. um, as I was, I was said, as I said before, that when we went to, to Sir Coxon, you know, um, it was easy for me, and because you know, it was a big star, so it was right away we were going to the studio. So you bypassed the auditions on the Sunday? I, I actually bypassed it. Okay. You know, and. Um, but still have that, that belly pain whenever I'm going to sing. You know, uh, because I'm not into it as a stranger call. Right. Because he's 100 into it. Let's, let's say 80% then. Okay. Because, you know, and, um, and, and you're seeing people like Light Nibs. Now you're seeing the greats now. You know, although the ones that Duke is are so genius, you know, Baba Brooks and John okay. Baker, these are the first set of people, you know, who established the music, music instrumentally speaking. Mm -hmm. So I see people like Lightnibs, Johnny Moore, Ronald Fonso, Brevet, Dan Germans, Tommy McCook, all these great musicians and never con confront them before it in a way. So I prayed every time that I, you know, I, I would do these two songs. I personally know, fell in love with, with, with Sudan one because that's where I grew up, on the blues. And the real blues. My mother, she, she sang the blues every day while she washes her clothes. Mm -hmm. And so I, f I find myself, when I woke up in the morning, I, like, I don't drink tea, have any tea or anything. Nothing to eat, nothing to drink. Okay. I scale the wall at the school, taking a shortcut. Scale the wall and walk all the way to Brentford Road. Sat down, looking at people like uh, who know gay lads, you know, the whalers, you know. Um, well, again, um, Lassell Perkins, that's one of the names I want to remember. Okay. Same Wilfred Edwards, Jack Edwards, Owen Gray, all these great guys, you know. And so I started to go there every day. Sat down, don't know what is going to happen. Don't be come out of his office, pass by, go into business, come back. One day, he called me and he said, I think you should go solo. And I said to him, you sure about that? And he said, yes, because you are, you are different. Just tell you the truth, because no one is different from the other. Mm -hmm. You know, spiritually speaking and physically to every, every part of us. But that's to, to give me courage, to encourage me, you know, and, and, and don't be, didn't see me as a scare singer. He sees me as a soul singer. So when I, when I started to record it, when I recorded for the first two songs, I recorded, Ooh, baby, I love you, is an adopted song that he brought back from America, you know. And Rita Marley, she had a group they called the Soulettes, and they were the background vocal. So whenever I, whenever I sing a part, they go, ooh, ooh, that, it was a doo-wop days, you know? Mm -hmm. And then now, uh, I do one by Jackie Wilson, lonely teardrops, you know? 
And, but they didn't sold well. They didn't do well because Jamaica people started to identify with the ska. Right. It was, it was a boom, you know, the ska, you know. And it's is Sir Coxon. Thank God for him. Other people say things, you know, that we guys, like, like, like would be ungrateful. And it's nothing like that. We are not ungrateful. I know what he had done for us. But whenever we discuss it, it is all about the financial part of it. Mm. And I never curse Sir Coxon. Never curse him. I never curse him. I'm going to talk about what I, I didn't receive as royalty or whatever. But this man, this man had done so much for us. He, he opened door for us, doors. Because even now at this time of my life, is what he had done for us, you know, that, I'm, that, that make me still surviving up till today. And all of us play our part, you know, not that like it's him he alone. Because when he, do, when he got the musician of his shoulder, that's the first part of it. That's why we have to thank God for him. Because mm. we, were, we were unfortunate children, young people. We didn't, our parents weren't rich. They bred and fed us with a little bit that they had. But we weren't rich people. I grew up into a government house. You know, my mother, she paid 12 shillings a month. So, and this is why. We have to mention Sir Coxon. Him Alton as somebody who were barely, who was so hurt. Whenever I spoke about Sir Coxon, at some point of that reasoning, him have to say something good. Mm. And so, but the, as I was saying before, that the scar, right? We're taking over the place. So Sir Coxon, send me back in the street again. That's why I have to love him. Because when Billy's in you, you know? He work, he work with you, work on you, work with you. So I went in the studio, <laughs> and during that period now, it wasn't just the scatter lights alone you were using. You were using a little band. They played in the North Coast, they called the Sharks. That, the, the leader for that band were Dwight Pickney, that plays guitar, and, and up till now he's still around. So they were the, were the resident band at one time, and I sang, you're no good, chung, ung, 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 for what you have done, you know. And then I sing, now you come running back, now you come running on the track, you know. And then for you to, 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 to hear your songs, you have to go to the dance hall. Because the dance hall played a great part in the development of Jamaican music. There's so much sound system around those days, but Drew Creed and Prince Bust and Circus was the dominant ones. And they promoted their songs through the sound, the sound system. Mm -hmm. And so you have to go there, and, and sometimes I go to a dance, I don't, I don't go inside the dance, I'm outside standing up, waiting to listen to my songs. They didn't play me that night. Go back home, anyway the dance is again, I find it, listen, and that night, out here, dang, 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 you're no, dang, dang, you know, you're no good. And, and, um, I didn't use to my vocal as yet, 100. But, but, talking, I, I remember that I've done a recording long before that, before Sir Coxon had the studio. He used to use the Federal with a guy named from Australia. He, named, um, he, he died a couple of years ago, a nice man. This is why I don't believe in color, you know. Cause he, he's, he's a white man, that's how people describe people because of color. But he's a beautiful man, a wonderful man. He's calm and humble. So, so Gaylords with B.B. Seaton, he did a, a solo song that day. And I did want to know uh, a song to prevent is better than cure. That's why you need your arms to hold. I'm preventing, ooh, yeah, a pain in my heart, you know? <laughs> and so now, from there to where we just finished half a while ago, and after you're no good, come running back, I don't have to. To, to, to have any special time to go in the studio now because I become a resident artist now for Studio One. 
So whenever we have the time, I can look at, I can look at, if I have a song, I can look at Jackie me too when he, when he, when he comes to the studio and I can say, Jackie, you know, I have a new song. And he let me know if I can record it that day or tomorrow. So it was, it was easy for me now. And that's why we end up with so much songs. Because I'm in the studio all the time. Wheelers, Gaylers, Delroy Wilson. Delroy Wilson now. Where he was the, the star. Those days, you know, and, um, and we became good friends, you know, after a while, you know. And then I went in the studio and I did songs like Puppet on a String. That's The Train Is Coming. It's my biggest hit song. The first big hit song for me was The Train Is Coming. Because we didn't know about any plane. We didn't flew in a plane or anything. So we don't know what, what the plane is like. We would see it flying in the sky. I didn't even go to the airport those days mm. to go near to a plane, but we could go near to a train. Now when we're going to the, to the beach, we have to pass the train line, the railway. So we see all these trains park up and thing, you know. So that's when the idea came to me, came up to me and I, train is coming, baby. And I turned it into a love song. Mm. Thank God for that song. Who, who, yeah. who, who did the harmonies on the train he's coming? The Whalers. Whalers. Yeah, but Bob didn't involve. That's Peter Bunny and, and B.B. Seaton. Right. And Joe, I think. I think it's more than about four of us. Release. Big song. And those days we have the charts. Enter the charts. Top ten. Number one. That even the children, you know, at one time, me and some, some police, we got caught up in a little, you know, like because of reefer, you know. And, and those days I'm popular now, you know. But before that, another thing that lets you know that your song is, is big is the jukebox. Right. You know, so I pass by a jukebox and here the train is coming to people dancing in the bars, you know. I mean, back then, um, obviously, vinyl doesn't sell in the quantities that it used to then. What, what sort of estimate would you put on some of these singles in terms of how many you were know, sold? You know, so the truth, the business weren't as big as now, and yet we were selling like 80,000. 80,000? Yes, we guys. We sell 60, 70,000 because Sircax never was doing pressing plant. Um, I tell you, it's a journey, but I, I enjoyed it. And, and then pop it on a string, as I was saying before. So Cox went to England, and Sandy Shaw, she, she performed barefooted, as you know. You heard about her? Yeah. And she won the European Eurovision contest with pop it on a string. So he brought it back. And those days now, Jackie Mitu can make the rhythm. I heard about because we are doing more tracks now. So one day I, I was going home from the studio and I heard Ken, 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 and it's Jackie me too. And he said, Don't be saying you must do this song, you know. And I and I, and I, and I turn around and I go into the studio. My my head was so good, you know, that I can just listen to a song and sing it. So I recorded it, the song. And Sir Cox you now have dub plates. You know, acetate, yeah. And he would took them to his dance, and, and that's the way we get to promote the songs and see if the, all the people react to the songs. And <laughs> sorry, so he told me to meet with him at Greenwich Farm. Greenwich Farm was a dance place, you know, in those days. Greenwich Farm and North Street, you know. So I I went down there, and I I stood up and I listened. I could go into any dance those days. As a CEO, they let you in because you're, you know, they say star, but... Household name. Was household name. Right. All right. But I, I love that more than the star because all of us are stars. <laughs> so, um, and when he played it, you know, every time he played a song, he played it back again. Like two songs or three, he played it back again. Because the people were so connected to the song for the first time. And, and then he released the song, and it becomes number one also. And it becomes a whole soul song, like the train. And so now Sir Cox decided to have a tour 
in England, and but Alton Ellis now, we have a very dominant singer, he was singing for Drew Creed, mm. we started to sing for Sir Cox now. So we had, get ready, rock steady, you know. And these two songs were doing well. So he decided that he's going to took us to England, both of us. And because some of the scatterlies couldn't make it, the, the papers didn't set up in time. Mm. So he changed the name, Scatterly, to the Soul Vendors. Jackie made two running on the fans, so Johnny Moore, Grivet. Because Light Names didn't get to make it because of, you know? Hey, yeah. And so we, we, we went to England, and we, the first time I'm going to sing for white folks is in England. You know, I, 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 but you know, we were like some country boys, you know, um, so when, when, whenever I hear my name to go on stage, the butterflies in my belly, my belly cut heavy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and yeah, yeah, I need this. Thank you very much. I need some water. Well, we're sharing some musical history here with Ken Booth here. Um, look out for part two of our interview coming very, very soon.